now, um, you know, whenever we have this, this, you guys are a very special group of people. First of all, you already sentonomy. Say, I am sentonomy. I am, I am sentonomy. Nothing can change. You know, as Edith was saying, you're already in the sentonomy family. And for us, it's a family. How many of you are here because you know someone who went for sentonomy? And they've told you about it, a good majority. How many are you here because you somehow you've been receiving emails and notifications and social media from us? How many? There. How many are here because maybe they've been reading articles or they heard it on radio or TV or somewhere? So all of you are here because you've heard about us from someone or somewhere or you've been reading. This is not the first time you've heard of Centronomy, correct? And we were very focused with this particular open day. We are like, we're not going to advertise so much because we really want it to be the people who have some already some sort of engagement with us. Because we are like, we, to you guys, we are, we are, you are our family already. You are our partners already and we want to take this to the next level. So we're like, let's keep this open day and try and get the people who we are already interacting with in some sort of way. And that is why this time we didn't go and have the 2000 theater auditorium for the open day because we want to make a difference in the people who are already in our, within our sites. But um, just before we start, yeah, I just want to ask you a question, and please talk. You know, you guys who are not here earlier, we told everyone, please t tell each other why you are here. Now, I want all of you to make some choices. Just now, very simple choices that we make every day. Yeah. The first one is, if you were given ice cream, would it be vanilla or chocolate? Vanilla. No, just tell each other. So choose your partners, and I answer this. <laughs> and answer it with each other. How many vanilla? How many chocolates? Okay. Another choice. Okay. If you were given uh, a chocolate, would it be dairy milk or Kit Kat? No. Tell each other what's your daughter. How many dairy milk? How many Kit Kats? Great. If you were given, if there was a car outside waiting for you, there's the Mercedes as we've, as we've heard about, and there's the BMW, which one would it be? How many Mercedes? How many BMW? If you are to watch TV, go home and you're going you're gonna to choose a TV station. Is it going to be NTV or Citizen? Citizen. Okay, again, just answer. How many are NTV? How many are Citizen? Okay. And don't be influenced because Andrew is here for the next question, yeah? If you were to listen to radio, would it be Capital FM or would it be Kiss FM? <laughs> Don't be influenced. How many capital? Hey, okay, that. How many keys? Okay. Yeah. You go to the supermarket and you buy milk. Is it going to be fresher or is it going to be Ilara? How many fresher? How many Ilara? Okay, all right. If you are to buy detergent, is it going to be Omo or is it going to be sunlight? How many sunlight? How many Omo? There. Yeah. So, what, what have you gotten from that exercise? Choices, yeah? And I want to tell you something. Well, there's nothing more to it than a choice. Don't overthink it. Don't rationalize it. Because sometimes we go into, I can't be wealthy because of what? I don't have money. I can't be wealthy because? My family is not rich. I can't be wealthy because? I'm not educated. I can't be wealthy because I'm disabled. I'm disabled. I can't be wealthy because I live in Korogosho. I, I can't be wealthy because I'm a, huh? I'm, a I'm a woman. I can't be wealthy because I'm old. I'm old. I can't be wealthy because I'm young. 
Yeah? So some people are saying I'm old, others are because the same excuses I'm young. I can't be wealthy because I'm an, an educated. Yeah, I don't have a PhD in you know whatever that apparently well people have a PhD. But just the same way, if you chose the Mercedes, does it mean there's something wrong with the BMW? If you chose dairy milk, does it mean there's something wrong with Kit Kat? If you chose Omo, does it mean there's something wrong with sunlight? It is just a choice. There's no when you cho when you went Omo sunlight, not most of us will not go and look at the what was the detergent making process of Omo and read all that. We've not gone online to look at the detergent making process. We just chose. And that's the same thing I want to tell you here today. Wealth is just a choice. It is not because you're educated. It is not a factor of where you are living. It is not a factor of how much money is in your bank account. It is a factor of making that choice. And I want to, date, let's, to just show you, and we really emphasize this in our programs, the kind of choices that we talk about. By the way, in Centronomy, we never impose anything on anybody. We have not, we didn't tell Andrew what to do. We didn't tell Edith what to do. We just maybe provided an, an environment which allows them to think about themselves and ask themselves, what do I want to do? And I, am I making the right choices that are in line with what I want to do? So the first choice I want you to do is to choose to pay yourself. And you may be thinking, but I pay myself. How many people are already working? You're already in the workforce. Whether it's a business or you're in a job, you're working. Okay, a good, a good number, yeah? So we work and we think, gosh, I'm doing well because I have a job. I'm doing well because, you know, I have, um, after, I, after I, I finish work, what do I go do? Relax, whatever, meet my friends. But it's, it's a matter of, to be wealthy, you have to realize, am I choosing to pay myself? So let's, let's go through the normal cycle when you're working. We work, and even for the people who are going to enter the workforce, this is a good lesson. We work January to December, correct? Yeah. So when money comes in, for those who are working, who, who gets paid first? The government. The government. Tax. Government. Yeah, Stanley said today is a lesson. Because you guys are so special to us and you've already interacted with us, today we are giving you a lesson. Yeah, today is a lesson. Clap for yourselves, you are a special group. Yeah? This open day is a special group of people, yeah? So, we pay the government about 30% of our income. So we are paying the government, so for example, if I'm earning, uh, just to make the calculation simple, if I'm earning 100,000, I would pay the government how much every month? 30,000. So every year, what would I pay the government? 360. So how many full month salary has the government taken? Like almost four months. So if I'm paying the government 30% of January, it means I'm paying the government 30% of the year. So we said it's equivalent to four months. We've all understood, yeah? January, February, March, April. Government. <laughs> government, yeah? Government, yeah? Now, I, just in case the government is watching, or okay, there's someone, some of you may be working for KRA, we, Central Me, is not a tax evasion program. <laughs> we are an awareness, what we do is awareness, and all I'm doing right now is making you aware, yeah? So nothing we can do about that, but there are some things we teach you that can probably legally make that from four months to three months. There's some things that you can do and some investments that you can make that can actually reduce that, yeah? Next, who do we pay? Landlord. Yeah, so what percentage of our income? Roughly. Maybe 20, let's work with 20. So 20% is equivalent to two months. May, June. Yeah? Oh, for the year. Yeah, for the year. All right. Next. Food. Food, yeah? Uh, how many people have families, children? Again, a good number.
number, let's work with them. Most people are going to be there. Uh, what will your house, what are you paying Naivas, Nakumat, Uchumi? Yeah. Percentage, what are you paying? The butchery, yeah. the lady and who was talking about on Langata Road who's doing very well selling bananas, all that. What are you paying her? Two months. July, August. Next, who do we pay? Even a leave child. I just want lifestyle expenses, yeah? Transport. Transport, correct? Yes. If you have a car, you're servicing it, yeah? Uh, you're fueling it, it will end up to a, a pro at least a month. Next. Hmm? <laughs> I can go retirement plan. Have we finished our expenses? Yeah? Entertainment. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there are some people who didn't make it today because they went and picked the bar too much yesterday. Like, so today they were like, Auntie St. John, I'm open. I, I, I can't. Yeah? So they are not here. Yeah? Entertainment, books, magazines, going out. Salon. Salon. <laughs> Yeah? The year is gone. Then there's school fees. Someone said there's school fees. Tight. Yeah. What? Has anyone put a gun apart from tax? We can leave tax out and say, by those three months, nothing I can do about it. Yeah? But the nine months, are those choices you have some level of control over? Yes. yes. You can choose to limit your entertainment. You can choose to be efficient with how you shop. So instead of buying, you know, one kg of Omo, you know, a hundred times that year, maybe just buy 10 kgs because it is cheaper per kg that way. Yeah? yeah. yeah? So it's just making simple choices. And, and, and you know, when, let me tell you how I started Centronomy. This, this was a big lesson for me because when I started Centronomy, I, I was working as a, in a bank. I had all these ideas of how business should work and I decided to start a business. And the first thing when you start a business, you realize there's no salary. So it really forced me to evaluate how have I been spending my money. And for me, the biggest realization was a lunch. I always use this example because for me, that was my lesson. How much do you spend on lunch every day? Okay, 200. Let's say 200, even 200. What is 200 times 30? 6,000. What is 6,000 times 12? What can you do with 72,000 shillings at the end of the year? That's the capital you need. That's the capital you're saying I don't have capital for this. I'm not wealthy because I don't have capital. Yeah? 72,000, you'll have done even three centronomy courses if you wanted with 72,000. Yeah? So it's just the choices we're making. So it is not because wealth is, it's not all those excuses we're giving ourselves. Can you see it is a choice? Yeah? The second choice. Choose to know and act rather than blame. Yeah. If we sat here and I told you, everybody, please tell your, the person you've been talking to, to you, who, how we can blame. Blame something for your, blame something for your situation. And I said, we're coming here to blame. Yeah? This is a venting and counseling session. We are blaming. <laughs> We're griping. What would we gripe about? Corruption. Corruption. Tax. Gravitation pool. Gravitational pool. But tell me, if I jump, if I jump, the only way is down. Yeah? What else? Yeah? Traffic jam. Interest rates. Cost of living. Yeah? So if we choose to play the blame game, but we can choose to know. And first, I want to say, let's first, all those things we want to blame, I don't have money, my employer should pay me more, all that. I first want us to do something I always say, we have to refresh our way of thinking. So I want you to say, are there some, is, there, is there something about your financial situation I want, you want to change? Yeah. Of course, you wrote down goals, so there's obviously something you want to change, yeah? Please first accept the situation as is, is your fault. 
Imagine, no matter how bad, no matter how bad it is. Yeah, and, and it's very hard because I know temptation is like, but is it really my fault? Is happening? I want you to resist that thing that says, no, it's not my fault, I am a victim. Yeah, I am a victim of the world, yeah? And the world systems. I want you to say one thing. It's my fault. On the count of three. One, two, three. It's my fault. It's my fault. Now when you say and accept, and every time that thought goes, but inflation, but, uh, but other people were given something that I was not given, just keep saying it's my fault. Because you know what that forces you to do? It forces you to start thinking. If it was my fault, what can I do about it? Not what can the government do. Not what can the MPs do. Not what can my employer do. Not what can my parents do. Yeah. But what can I do? And I think someone said it today. It's really, you start realizing, I can actually make choices from wherever I am. Yeah? From wherever I am, I can make a choice. And it starts to empower you because the thinking that wealth is beyond, someone has to give you something for you to become wealthy is not an empowered place to be. An empowered place to be is like saying, gosh, you mean with my 300 bob, it will accumulate to 6,000 at the end of the month, and that 6,000 I can buy shares in the stock exchange. That is empowerment. Yeah. Are we together? Yes. Am I losing anybody? No. Okay. So, and I just want you to, as we, as we start thinking, we're now choosing to know and act and not blame. Inflation is not a surprise because we always blame living expenses. So I'm here to show you the truth about living expenses, yeah? That same 100,000 we're talking about, in 10 years because of inflation, it will, be, it will cost you 400,000. Okay, oh sorry, yeah. So, if you're spending 10,000 shillings or 100,000 shillings, in 10 years to buy that same thing, so if you're spending 100,000 shillings on rent, fuel, going and buying some things in the supermarket, to go and buy the same, Rent, pay the same rent, fuel the same type of car, and buy the same brand you're buying in the supermarket, it will cost you 400,000 shillings. Yeah. So I don't I want us to be caught unaware like it's a, it's a surprise. Expenses will always go up. So let's, 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 not, let's not spend time wishing if the return was not going to happen, and let's start saying, then what am I doing about it? What is my plan? Yeah, so if you're spending 10,000 shillings now, it will be 40. So whatever it is you're spending now, for a very quick rough calculation, just multiply it by 4. If, if I just do it, do it. Roughly, what, what do you need to survive per month? And I want you to write, I am surviving on this now. In, in 10 years, I will need there for the same lifestyle. Well, just multiply it by 4. Please, I can see those. I want you to face the figure, face the number. <laughs> Even if you don't know what you're spending, maybe work with what you're earning and then say, if, you are, if you're spending everything you earn, then just multiply that by four. Yeah. Even if you're not already, you're a student, just, just in your lifestyle, without, if your parents were not, were not uh, accommodating your life, what do you think that life costs multiplied by four? Have you seen the figure? Yes. 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 <laughs> Someone's asking, will you survive? You will survive. You will not just survive, you will thrive. You will thrive if you make the right choices. Yeah. Another place that we teach is debt. Yeah, we're in a culture where consumer credit, credit is generally available. You'll be given a credit card immediately you start working. Yeah, the banks, if you have a payslip, they will loan you money. Yeah. So now the concept of debt is what we call other people's money, and it is an extremely important principle in wealth creation, the ability to use other people's money to grow. Yeah. But choose to access other people's money to work for you rather than access other people's
those money to work for someone else. So for example, I can take a loan, I can go to Kikuyu and buy the land. What will the land be after five years? Well, so if I buy a plot for 500,000, the plot will probably be worth what? Two million. So I would, maybe I borrowed, but will I have re received over and above what I borrowed? So has that loan, using other people's money, has it worked for me? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Or I can choose to buy that same 500,000, I go and buy a car. <coughs> After the end of the same period, what will, what will the car be worth? <laughs> yeah, it will be worth, what, 100, 200, but I had to pay a loan of maybe another 500,000. Am I in a profit or loss? A loss. You're in a loss. So you use other, but who gained from me taking other people's money? The bank and the, the dealer, the car, the people who said, the, people, the person who sold the car. So you access other people's money to work for somebody else. But when I bought the land, I access other people's money to actually work for me. And it's what Edith was saying earlier, Good debt versus bad debt, or in other words, assets versus losses. So we have to start making a choice and saying, when I do borrow, and sometimes we also still need, do sometimes borrow to have a car, that's okay. But as Andrew was saying, in fact, the car people borrow, their first car is never the problem. It is the continuous, I'm, I'm spending a life where I continuously want to keep upgrading the car. Yeah, but at the expense, of building those kind of assets that will actually work for me when I am not working. Yeah. Are we together? Yeah. You can choose to come to your own definition of wealth. And I think this is, um, like, and let me ask you this way. If I, if, let's say we are like, if I got 10 million, I'd be the happiest person ever. So you work hard, you get 10 million. When you get the 10 million, what will you want? 12. So you work hard again, we get 12. When you get the 12, what will you want? 15. You work hard again, you get the 15. What will you want? 20. You work hard again, you get the 20. Then you get the 20, what will you want? No, we 40. 40. You work hard, you get the 40. What will you want? More. You want 80. Yeah. So wealth is just not about the money itself. As Stanley said earlier, money is, is a tool, it's supposed to be a resource for the vision. The vision cannot be money because that will be a vision that just, it seems like, you know, like you're chasing, like you're chasing a goat. The goat you can never quite catch them. Or the chickens. Chickens, you know how you can never quite catch them. Yeah, you, you're near and then what does the chicken do? Yeah. So it will be like that, chasing a chicken if it's just about the money. But what is the money going to do for you is what you have to, you have to accept. So it's not, don't, don't do it, but, but first of all, we, there will always be, when it's just about our money, we have to realize, do you think just in this room there's someone who has more money than you? Do you think just in this room there's someone who has less money than you? Let me let you in on a big secret, for forever, there will always be someone who has more, and less. No matter how bad you think or how good you think your situation is, there's someone with more or less. So if we get satisfaction from thinking, I am the one with the most. Ha ha ha. Then you find, gosh, you go and meet someone else who has more, you now start feeling unhappy again. It's like why people, buying new cars is not bad, but if I, let's say I buy the Range Rover, then I'm like, ha, I'm the best. Then, a week later, your friend buys the newer version of that Range Rover. What does it leave you feeling? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So if, 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 we, if, we, if we compare ourselves to others, we will never be satisfied. So we have to come up with our own definition. So what do you, if you had money, what would it do for your life? What would it do? So it will help you live better. What else? Realize my vision. Realize your vision. What else? Peace of mind. You can achieve some, maybe you want to take your kids to certain schools, etc, etc, yeah? So it's not about the money, it's about what will it do for you, what's in it for you? 
Yeah. What is in it for you to have 10 million or 100 million or a billion, whatever the amount would be? Is it you will get to have, enjoy more time with your family? Yeah. Do you think that will change your family's, you know, life? Do you want to travel more? Yeah. Do you see, I always like using this example because that's me. That's a picture that's one my personal vision board. Do you see yourself spending, being able to spend time, you know, Discovering the sandy beaches of the globe, that's me, yeah? <laughs> do you want to create a legacy? Do you want a portfolio? Do you want to spend time playing golf? There's a class we run and then someone said, me, I just want to spend time playing golf. Do you want to, is it your dream home? Do you want to help the community in some way? What is it that money is going to do for you? And when you actually write it down, so apart from writing your goals, go and write this down. You actually start seeing, even from where you are, there are some things you can already start doing towards this. And that is why you may find some very rich people, but they are so unhappy. You, you probably met some of them, yeah? You wonder why are you so, why are you so unhappy, yeah? It is because they don't take time to understand what is behind the money. And it's giving money a context so it doesn't also start to control you. Yeah, because sometimes you can become very controlled by money. Are we together? Go and define this for yourself. Choose not to be controlled by fear. Because another thing that will come up, when you do decide the vision, what, will start, what are the thoughts are going to start playing in your mind? It's impossible. It's not for me. I can't. It's too okay. scary. What if? That we can summarize all that in the word fear. And I think what most of us are most scared of is the fear of getting out of your comfort zone. Yes. Yeah. Someone said that this is their, is it their sixth open day? I don't know who it was. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and today I'm challenging that person. Get out of the comfort zone. Yes, autonomy does get you out of the comfort zone, but so that you can achieve that dream that you actually want to achieve. So take short-term temporary discomfort for the bigger picture. Don't be controlled by your fear. Being in your fear is like being in a prison. So you can see outside, you can see how good it is, like this man is looking, the sky is so good, but what is holding him back? Yeah. The fear. Yeah. So let's remove that, and all it takes is one action at a time. And I like this statement that says, and there's even a book with this title, Feel the Fear, Do It Anyway. So just understand, even as you go out there, there are all those things that will tell you, no, I'll register later, I can't afford this program, what if, I don't know if it's for me. That is, that is fear checking in and giving you a reason. Fear doesn't want you to achieve your vision. So just say, trembling hand, go and put your name down for registration. Because getting over fear is just about, even though I feel scared, even though I feel unsure, you will never be 100% sure about anything. Yeah, I am still going to choose to do it. Yeah. Because even when we meet challenges, there are always going to be a lesson. Yeah, there's going to be a lesson in it. <laughs> then choices. It's not apart from just spending money. Choose to act. Yeah. Choose to think and choose to talk in line with your vision. So if you go to your normal group of people and you're talking about money, what are you what are you most likely to say? What are the words that people like saying about money? I don't have. I don't have. What else? Money is scarce. Business is bad. Business is bad. The love of money is the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. <laughs> <laughs> if I that's even most people just leave the love out, they just say, money is the root of all evil. Yes. Yeah, we have the money, yeah? Uh -huh. I am broke. Now, if I've, if I've spent three hours in a conversation about how money is scarce, it's evil, we are broke, and the economy is bad, as I get out there, what do you think I'm going to observe and see? The same thing. I think about this way. Is there a car that, before, let's say you drive a car, before you bought that particular car, and you decided that was the car you were going to buy, what did you see on the road? That car. A lot of them is like a container landed that minute. That minute. Yeah? That minute, and 
suddenly the car was everywhere. But here is news for you, the car has always been there. <laughs> Yeah, that Montana didn't land that day with that car, that color, yeah, that day. The car was always there, but you had not put it in your mind. That was not the information you had given your mind to process. So when you give your mind the right information to process, it starts seeing what roots can actually get you there. Yeah. So we've got to, despite circumstances, start saying, I'm not going to have those conversations of I am broke and whatever. I'm going to have those conversations that take me to the next level because you've just got to have the faith and the belief that once you start thinking, talking, and acting in line with what you want to achieve, you're going to start seeing opportunities. Let me tell you, opportunities are many. There are many. There's no lack of opportunities. It's, what is lacking is the people to see and act on the opportunity. And if it said something that we teach in class, execution is best. An idea is okay, but if you have an idea and then you go and talk about how broke you are, you've killed it. You've killed the process. It's actually about that is what I want to achieve. And, uh, and just understand, put yourself in the right environment and your mind will start to process how the, the journey, the journey forward. So you start doing things like Maybe you're investing. Maybe you will save more. Maybe you will start realizing, like I did, lunch money can actually be a tool for wealth creation. Have you ever looked at it that way? Lunch money, a tool for wealth creation. And that's just lunch. Yeah? Some of you are going to be just, just spend one day writing down everything you spend money on, and you will be shocked. Yeah? Maybe I can invest. Maybe I can have the right conversations. Maybe I can put myself in environments where I will think the correct way. Are we together? Choose to understand the value of money. Yeah. It is not, and I'm going back to my lunch example here, it is not, nothing is about having a lot of money. Yeah. You do not need a lot of money to come for Centronomy. You do not need a lot of money to invest. So remove the obstacle of a lot of money. We have had people who have said, I'm registering, I'm paying my 1,000 shillings registration, and I know by, by, the, by, the, by the time we start class, I will have figured it out. And just because they have done that, they have figured it out. You see, they've left here forcing themselves to figure it out. And they even come to talk to us about easy installments, and we are happy to have this conversation, yeah? But we want to work with people who have already made that choice, yeah? So just, back, just to illustrate what we were saying, 300 shillings a day is 9,000 shillings a month. 9,000 shillings a month is 108,000 shillings a year. December 31st, you're given 108,000 shillings. What can you do with it? Yeah, there you go. Yeah? If traveling and experiencing holidays was what you also put in your vision, do it. Because financial planning and managing money and what we teach is not about living a stingy life. Because I know many people, that's what they're scared of. They're gonna tell me to live a stingy life. We are not, and if we did that, myself and all the trainers, we'd be hypocrites, yeah? It is not about living a stingy life. It is just about you identifying what has value to you and planning your life so that you can experience that. Now, not just experience it once, experience it sustainably. Do you want to go just for one holiday? <laughs> Or do you want to go for a holiday every year? So instead of we'll, you'll go for just one big holiday and come back in a, in a mess that will take you the rest of your life to clean up, where like you can actually go on holiday every year and even every year you can plan to, to go on a bigger holiday. Yeah, so that's what we actually teach, yeah? So someone is right, it's, it's 100,000 shillings, it's, the whole, it's a holiday, it's a holiday. And a very good holiday at you know, the current rates, I'm telling you, 108,000 shillings can get you a luxury holiday now, yeah? With the current rates. And the way hotels have realized, gosh, all this time it was the domestic market we should have been focusing towards. Let me tell you, you can get a very good deal. What else can 108,000 shillings do for you? It's a, it's a plot of land. It's a plot of land. So we're here saying we don't have capital. Your capital is just there as you're eating lunch complaining. Oh, I'm broke. There. God has not given me the opportunities he has given others. <laughs> hey, if God is watching you eat the opportunity, yeah? <laughs> yeah? Those who have school children, is under eight school fees? You know in January how we, we remember, you know in December we forget we have kids, yeah? 
Then in January, we're like, ah, school fees, surprise. Yeah? yeah. Then we are borrowing, or we're going to now beg for installment payment with the school. But 180 school fees. Can 108 pay off a, a good chunk of your loans? There. Yeah. That credit card can be swiped off with just lunch money. Yeah, and then you can use that money more productively. So it's the small amount of money. And we always come back. In St. Thomas, we don't talk about big figures. We teach, we always say, use what you have. If it's 300 bob, we'll show you what to do. If it's 50 bob, we'll show you what to do. Yeah, if, if you have zero, but you have, you know, you're a painter, we'll also show you what to do. What, what are you doing with your skills, yeah? Choose to get out of the rat race. Yeah, now... The rat race is, um, I wrote an article about this actually last week, yeah? You read it, yeah? Have you ever physically watched the rat? But have you ever watched a clip of a rat trying to chase its tail? Even it doesn't have to be a rat. Even dogs do it sometimes. Yeah, they just keep... What, what, what happens even if a dog is trying to chase its tail? It never catches the tail. The way tails were made, I, I don't think any animal can actually catch it as in catch the tail, yeah? And, and that's what we do. So this is how we do the rat race. We're like, happiness is just, we convince ourselves, happiness is just around the corner if I work harder, yeah? So you work, yeah? Happiness is just around the corner, so you're working, but you're like, uh -huh, it's because I'm not earning enough money. That's why we are like, the employer should be paying me more. Well, yes. Yes? Yes. yes? Yes, but I'm not happy. It's because I'm not earning enough money, yeah? So we are like, when I earn more money, I will be? If my salary today was doubled, would you be happy? Yes, you, have, you may have short-term happiness, I'm not denying, yeah? But then we are, our salary is doubled. Then we are like, ah, is that money just sitting in the bank account? Uh, why am I not feeling the joy? When I said of finding 30, I now find 60,000, why am I not feeling the joy? Aha, it will be happen when I buy more things, yeah? What is, let me pass by the Samsung shop and see what they have for people whose salaries have been doubled, yeah? You even, you even walk in and say, you know, with arrogance, hello, my salary has just been doubled, yeah? <laughs> yeah, watch this space, my salary has been doubled. So you buy the Samsung, then after the Samsung, after a few days, it becomes normal. Then you go back to, Let's keep going, and it is when I work harder. It is when I'm, now the salary has been doubled, you're no longer happy with that salary. It is when the salary is tripled. It is, you, so it's, can you see it will never end? You know why? The world is never going to run out of places to spend money on. Never. If we bought the latest Samsung today, what is the latest Samsung? It's me, I don't even know. S6 Plus. Yeah. They brought an S6, yeah. S6 Edge. They brought an S6 and then S6 Edge. Now, so, they're saying right, it's S, Edge Plus. Ah, yeah, yeah, Edge Plus. Imagine the misery of that person <laughs> who bought the S6, and they're like, woohoo, I have the latest. <laughs> then they brought the S6 Edge, and then to top it off, at the Edge Plus. Yes. <laughs> S6 Edge Plus. I mean, imagine the misery. Now he's three models behind. Yeah, how, see now, how, can you see how he'll keep? But Samsung will never stop, yeah? They'll never be, restaurants will never stop. Fuel will never stop becoming more expensive. They're not going to stop producing cars. So we've got to now say, okay, since, it will, since the acquisition of things will never stop because there'll always be new things to acquire, can I just tone down and just come to the realization, what is it I am doing all this for? Since now, you, this is just to clue you in, the things will not be ha make you happy because there's something else to buy all the time, yeah? Go back to what I asked, what is your vision? What do you personally want to experience? Things that people cannot take away from you because a new model came out, yeah? Creating a legacy. You want to travel. You want to experience the world. You want to do certain things with your family. Things that no one can ever tell you, but there's an upgraded version right. of that, yeah? <laughs> Traveling, yes, but the experience itself that you had cannot be taken away from you. But the phone experience, I mean, it's so easy yeah, for that to be taken away from you. 
So we've got to just choose to come out of the rat race. How do we do that? Back to my first choice, yeah? Choose to pay yourself. Start putting away money aside that will go into investments that even the day you are not working, what, are they, what is it doing for you? You can sustain yourself. Yeah, that way your life stops being dependent on you working, but more dependent on the investments and the assets that you're actually, that you're actually building. We talked about take ownership. From today, take ownership and tell yourself, it is me who has to do something about it. And the question is, what, and I want to leave you with this, what are you going to do about it? In fact, please answer that question to your neighbor. Now, now, now. What are you going to do about it? Because that's it. everyone will want that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, hope that some of you have made the choice to let us walk in this journey with you. Yeah? As I said, for us, we passionately believe, first of all, that everybody can create wealth. Everybody. And I'm asking you, are you going to give yourself the chance to actually create that wealth? Are you going to give yourself the chance to do it? Yeah. So the last choice you have to make is choose to face the man in the mirror, yeah? It's just looking at yourself and saying, what am I going to do about it? And then choose to learn and put yourself in the right environment. Or we already consider you our family. We already consider you our partners. We have been communicating in some way or form with you, whether it's directly or whether it's through someone who has gone through syntonomy. So we want you to join us. Join our, our family, come and learn. Put yourself in an environment where people have different types of conversations, where their minds are opened up, where all the limitations you have been told that you can't do, we challenge them and ask, really, really you can't do them? Who told you? Have they done it that they can tell you? Are the, pe the people who tell us we can't do, have they done it by the way? And remember when people are telling you they can't do, they're also imposing their own insecurities on you. Because they don't believe they can do it. They, don't, they really don't want to see someone else trying, just in case you make them. Very practical, you go out and do things that relate to you. That is why we call it personal fire. Our journey, because it's a journey. Centonomy is a journey. Someone said centonomy is a lifestyle. Centonomy is not a degree program. There's no exam. So we do not handle the classes like an exam. We have Centonomy 101, and basically what we go through in this class, where I understand exactly where you are. If I'm in Museum Hill and I want to go to the airport, I need to actually know and understand where it is I am. Then we go to how do you turn that where you are now, but then where you are now can always be turned into wealth. How do you turn that into wealth? So we go to the next phase of creation of wealth, and then the last phase is how do I protect that wealth as I grow it. So in understanding where you are today, it's really, you will form a relationship with your money, yeah? You will start to understand how am I spending it on a, not, not at, at your monthly budget, on a day-to-day -day basis, because that is what is practical, yeah? You'll start to understand what do I have in terms of assets, and what do I have in terms of losses? Yeah? 
you'll start to understand what is really an asset and what is a flaw set, and what do I have in terms of liabilities. So it's what we call facing the man in the mirror, getting in touch with, with where you are financially. And where you are financially has no impact on where it could be next year, but you do have to come to terms with it. Because I know personally, I always wanted to avoid looking at my money. And this was me. Go to the ATM, withdraw 1,000 shillings. Do you want a receipt? No. no. I guess I can see, you see? You know the answer even before I say it, yeah? You can relate, yeah? Me as be like, even why you have given me the 1,000, even you went to the ATM tetemeka yeah? You don't know whether it's going to remove the 1,000, then it removes it. I'm like, do I want to say no, yeah? If you, if you, the ATM, made a mistake, please me, I'm off, yeah? Because you just don't want to face it, yeah? It's sometimes a scary thing, but we have a process and we'll teach you how to do it and to be able to understand. And you also, that also starts to teach you where your priorities are. We teach you, now we get to, face, from facing where are you going? Those goals that you have written them down will now dissect them and say, what all the goals, write them down, and now what is the plan? What are we now doing towards these goals that we are achieving? We, we help you understand time value of money a bit better. As I said, 100,000 shillings today will be 400,000. If you're saving for your child to go to college in 10 years or 15 years, what college costs now is not what it will cost then. If you're saving to buy, you want to buy a house in five years, what the house costs now is not what it will cost them. We help you understand debt. You actually can get out of debt. Yeah? Debt is not a shackle. Yeah? It's just you to understand and realize something. There's a way you can talk to the banks. There's a way you can start putting money to pay your debt faster, and there's a process to that. Then the other side of debt is how now debt can make you wealthy, yeah, if you do choose to do that. We help you understand your skills. What are your non-financial skills? I can draw. I'm good at speaking. I'm a creative. I can write. I can farm. There are so many things people can actually do, and to turn that into an income generating venture. One of our classes is called Living Abundantly, and it's really a lot of what we've been dealing here today. Have you noticed what we're actually doing here today is challenging the way we think about money? And money, a lot of it is how we think. So we go back into what are those beliefs we have had that have held us back, and how do we get past that? What are the choices that we make? And also really, really, really get in touch with all those things people have told you you can never have. Get in touch with what do you value? Yeah. What do you completely value? What is happiness and what is wealth to you? We then, we then go to creation of wealth. Creation of wealth is what are investments? How do the investments work? Yeah. How do you get more out of your savings? How do shares work if you choose? The property we're hearing today, how does the property market work and how should you make choices? And not to pressure anyone, property is not for everyone. People will choose different investments, especially once they've realized what it is they want to achieve. Those skills, how do I turn them into income generation? That's what we call creation of wealth. But we can't create wealth blindly, we need to protect it. Some of us have families. How do I protect my assets so my family is never in trouble? How do I use insurance? How do I estate plan, how do I create a will, how do I create a structure, so even though I'm not here, my family will be protected. And that is Antonomy 101, targeted towards those people who have left campus and are already entering or are in the workforce. It is not an age, there's no age, the principles are saying there's no age, we have people in that class all the way from 23 to, we've even had 55 year old people, people share their experiences, they network and everybody comes out of there. Then for the students, and I can see a lot of them are here, we have campus edition, but sorry, let me first go to one one, the structure. We're asking for two and a half hours per week. What, what do you do, what activities do you waste two and a half hours per week with? What's up? Uh -huh. Series? Sleeping? We're not asking you to quit your job to attend Centonomy. Two and a half hours of your week. Investing in, because you have decided this time things can be different, yeah? We have flexible classes. You can choose Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday evening, 6 to 8.30, or you can choose Saturday morning. And it's flexible, so if you choose a Tuesday class, but for some reason that Tuesday you could not get into class, um, you can still come Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, because that whole week all classes are learning the same, the same thing. 
So we are flexible. The costs are 1,500 registration. Today, if you register, the registration cost has been discounted to 1,000. And then the others you can pay in installments. Our ordinary installments are about 11 to 12,000 shillings per month. And again, 300 bob, 30 days is how much? 9,000 shillings, yeah? So it's easy payment. And our venues are, we have a Centronomy Training Center that's in Westlands. We also have another training center in Westlands. We have Town and we have Mombasa Road. We know some of you are coming from that side of town. So choose the venue that, that actually works for you. To the, to the people who are in campus, it's all about, you know, you can actually start early and be ahead. Yeah, because many of us, myself included, we've always said, are some of you wishing you knew this earlier? What you've learned today? So we decided, instead of people wishing I knew this earlier, let us actually just um, start a course that is in there. What we're teaching, the principles we're teaching, but we know it's in the language of people who are in campus. Basically, I could not do a better job on explaining to you campus edition than Edith did, yeah? But it's explaining for young people what can you do? What can you leverage on? What are the principles of money that you actually have to understand? How do you start saving and investing? How do you create the mindset from the word go and also start teaching, giving you an introduction into entrepreneurship? So the structure of this course is once a week for five, for once a week for five weeks, three hour classes. We have a Saturday class because that, has, that is what we have seen works with the, the campus schedule. Costs are 1,000 shillings registration, 500 today, and the rest are installments of 2,500 shillings uh, per, per week. The venues are, again, Westlands, our training center, and, uh, and, and that's the, those are the two courses that we are actually, the intakes are actually happening from this week. So this, the campus edition starts on the 19th and 101 starts on the, the week after. And we also do have an entrepreneurship program for those now, we encourage you to first go through 101, but for those who are in business and they want to take their business to the next level or are thinking about starting business, at some point you can also consider our, our entrepreneurship program. So in all our courses, what will you experience? Transformation. Yeah, it's transformation. And we're not saying it because we were just because we are saying it. We're saying it because we have now had over 5,000 people in this program and we have seen each and every one of them transformed. If you want more proof today, go to our YouTube channel. Yeah, and just see the videos of what people are actually doing. It's which we, 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 we speak about attitude and we combine that with practical things that you're actually doing. So after class, you'll go and do something, yeah? We have expert facilitators. Now when I say expert, let me, let me explain to you what in Centronomy we mean by experts. People who have gone through experiences and are coming to share that experience. You know how in school, the lecturer is teaching, you know, accounting, there's nothing you can question. He's there, the accounting is theoretical, yeah? But here it's not, they are experts in their field, but they are also combining them with their personal experiences. Everybody there has a personal story about money. So we have, we have lawyers, we have tax experts, we have people in the banking industry, we have people who are experts in debt. Myself and Stanley also, also teach portions of that class. We have life coaches as part of our, of our facilitators. You'll also have a lot of interactive discussions and group work. There's so much learning when people ha discuss yeah, and share. So we actually, we actually encourage that. So there'll be group work. You'll network because of that. You'll interact and study those who have created wealth. It's not about we will send you to go and talk to someone who has created wealth and hear from the horse's mouth so that you understand people who have created wealth are not from Mars. They didn't come from a different planet. They were not given a special gene. They just made what? Choices. Yeah. You'll, you'll work, you'll do take home assignments yeah, on your personal money, but we're not going to come and read your budget in front of class. It is for you yeah, to go learn about yourself and start up immediately. Up. Each lesson is applicable. So you get the most when you go for one class and you immediately start applying. You have access to the various experts as you do the course. Can I reiterate, there is no exam. <laughs> there is no at graduation, number one is Stella. Number last is Timothy, no. 
Like the way they traumatized us in school when they're reading test results, yeah? Nothing of the sort. And we'll give you a certificate after the course to remember that you did the class. And especially those in campus who are looking for, as you go and look for employment, you can actually present. It has now become a certificate you can, pre, you can present and say, I've done a personal finance course. Because a lot of corporations, that's what they, when they, with their, with their staff, that's what they're actually struggling with, yeah? So they kind of look at, at it a bit friendlier. So in a nutshell, it is money made simple, practical, and fun. And I just want you, before we leave, to just challenge you. Do something different for yourself. Let not this be there. You come for another open day, and another open day, and another open day without anything changing. And I do hope, and we'd be very honored to partner with you in this journey. If you have any further questions, myself and Stanley will be outside to talk to you as you register. Please do register. Do not let all those mind blocks we talked about block you. Oh, I don't have this, I don't have time. Just register and you will be shocked by the time the classes are starting what will have worked your way. In fact, I challenge you to do it. Thank you very much for coming to spend this Saturday with us. Thank you. Yeah.